Hello and welcome, this is Mr. Buss. Uh, this video is gonna go over the part A of the Diffusion Lab for AP Bio, where we're going to take a look and see uh, how glucose and starch, so this solution here has uh, glucose in it, 15%. Remember, glucose is a monosaccharide, C6H12O6, and starch is made up of many, 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 many glucose molecules stuck together as a polysaccharide. So this is just a combination of both of those two things mixed together. We're gonna see how this moves through a uh, membrane, in this case, dialysis tubing, which is made up of uh, actually cellulose, I believe. Um, so, uh, you know, large molecules won't pass, whereas smaller molecules will. So we're gonna see uh, how glucose and starch are able to or not able to diffuse out of the dialysis tubing. So I'll just go ahead and set that up. Have the tubing here. We'll have to clamp one end first. So I'm gonna fold over part of the tubing there. All right, clamp this end. And this end, we're gonna fill up with about 10 milliliters of the glucose and starch solution. Okay, clamp that end down. Fold it over first. You know, since that may have gotten contaminated on the outside, I'm gonna rinse that off quick. Now I'm gonna dry it a little bit as well, not a lot, but just dab it dry in a towel. And then I'm gonna put it on a scale and weigh it. Okay, 24.1. Okay, now I'm going to put the dialysis tubing in the purified or distilled water. And I'm just gonna let that sit then for about half an hour. And then we're going to test for glucose using a Benedict's solution test. And we will test for starch using iodine. Okay, so it's been about half an hour. So we've given this uh, time to diffuse. And so the first thing we're going to test for is to see if water has moved into the dialysis bag or out of the dialysis bag. So in order to do that, we're gonna weigh the bag just like we did previous. So we're gonna take this out and then dab it dry a little bit. So if it weighs more, then uh, it certainly has diffused into the bag. And if it weighs less, then water is diffused out of the bag. So now we're at 25.6. So that number has gone up so water has moved, the net amount of water has moved into the bag. So more water has moved into the bag than has moved out of the bag. The next thing we're gonna test for is whether or not glucose has moved into the water, because this was just purified water to begin with. So has glucose moved in there or not? In order to do that test, we are going to put some of this water into a test tube and use Benedict's solution. All right. So here's water from the beaker. Add some Benedict's.
and then we need to heat this. So I've got some pretty hot water. If sugar is present, then the blue coloration will turn to a green or an orange or even a bright red after a few minutes. Okay, looks like it's starting to go through a color change a little bit. Definitely a positive result. I'll let it go for a little longer here. Okay, it looks like glucose was definitely present since the color change occurred. Here's what the color change looked like after about five minutes of sitting in the hot water. So definitely a lot of glucose had diffused out of the bag and into the, the pure water in the beaker. Okay, so now we're gonna test for starch. We know that starch was in the bag to begin with. Uh, so we're going to see if starch has diffused out into the water or not. I don't think so because it doesn't look cloudy, but let's check anyway. This is iodine, and iodine will turn starch black. And if there's no um, starch present in the water, it'll just stay yellow. Okay, so looks like the water is just yellow, so starch has stayed in the bag, and in fact, if I can zoom in there, you can see that the contents of the bag are starting to turn black because the iodine, which is a smaller molecule, is actually diffusing into the bag, turning the contents of the bag, or the starch inside the bag, black. So, to summarize, water moved into the bag more than it moved out of the bag. Glucose moved out of the bag more than it moved into the bag, well, because it didn't have any in the water to begin with. And starch could not move through the bag because it was too large of a molecule. So everything was able to move through the dialysis tubing except for the starch. Okay, so just to summary, the question it asks is, uh, can you graph this? So again, water, had a net result of moving positive into the bag and starch had a net result of zero. There was no movement into or out of the bag for starch, it just stayed put. And glucose had a net movement out of the bag and into the water solution. And so if you're gonna graph the relative amount or relative concentration in the bag over time, so I'll, I'll graph the starch one first. So a uh, zero would be that the line doesn't move up or down. So the relative amount of uh, starch in the bag stayed constant because it couldn't leave the bag. So over time, there's no change. The relative amount of water in the bag, again, since the number went up, there was more water moving into the bag than out. Uh, using terms like hypotonic, hypertonic, the dialysis bag containing the sugar and the starch uh, was in a hypotonic environment because it was in pure water. So the pure water is gonna move from high to low concentration. So it moved from the surrounding beaker into the bag at a faster rate than it moved out. It's not that it can't move out of the bag, it just moves in at a faster rate than it moves out. So over time, the water uh, amount in the bag increased. It'll probably curve off a little bit over time because that bag's gonna start to fill up with pressure. And as the pressure of the bag increases, you're gonna uh, limit the amount of water that can move in. And then glucose had a net decrease in the bag, and so glucose is going to go in the negative direction. Uh, I know these don't line up. It doesn't matter how they line up or anything like that. Just the idea is that you can understand if it's a uh, positive slope, negative slope, or zero slope for these.